reality. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And those believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, that, that, that the world through him may be saved. So I'm coming over here to give you the gospel again. Christ said, Christ Jesus said it himself. He said, Christ Jesus said, that no man come unto me except that the Father who has sent me draw him, and I should raise him up at the last day. Christ is the one that's going to draw you to himself. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got nothing to do with a preacher. It's got nothing to do with a pastor or apostle or a prophet. Anything to do with it, anybody like that. We're just the messengers. Because God has sent us out to give you his message that he is risen and that he loves you. And all he wants you to do is ask him Ask him for your forgiveness. That's all he wants you to do. You don't have to try to change yourself. You don't have to try to do this and do that. Uh, any kind of religious thing. All you have to do is come to him. All you have to do is humble yourself. All you have to do is repent and be baptized. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. If you want to experience the love of God, you must be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. But you have to turn away from your sins and your wicked ways in order for that to happen. That's what I had to do, and that's what anyone who has been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit of God has had to do. Repentance is actually a gift. God is not, a, God is not trying to take anything away from you, but he's trying to give you more. That's what he's trying to do. God does not try to take anything away from you. His desire is to give you more of what he's already promised to give you, uh, of the, uh, whatever he promised to give you before the foundation of the world. He has so many things he wants to give to you, but in order for you to get there, you have to turn away. You have to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. And then you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power to be his witness. You shall receive power to live above sin. That's the only way. It's through the Spirit of God. It has nothing to do with you going to a, a building every Sunday. We know many people that go to, go to buildings every Sunday, but that don't mean they say you can go to hell in the church. Because this thing is not about a religion. It's about having a relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. It's about having a relationship with Him. And... You have to talk to them just like you talk to anyone else. You have to talk to them like you talk to your, your friends, your family, your husband, your wife. You have to come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's coming back quickly. He said, for behold, I come quickly. God bless you. God bless you, man of God. He said, behold, for I come quickly. He said, behold, for I stand at the door and knock. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart right now. That's why he's got me out here. It don't matter about the weather. I know the weather don't look good, but I have to walk by faith and not by sight. As a Christian and as, as, as someone who is filled with the Holy Ghost, someone who has been delivered from homosexuality and from addiction to drugs and alcohol, I think and I know for a fact that your soul is worth more than anything in this earth, and that's why I'm out here. It is for your soul. Because there's many people that have visited hell or seen a vision of hell, and it's not pretty. All you got to do is imagine every work, bad thing that's ever happened in, in your life and multiply it. Multiply it, what's the biggest number? Infinity. 
Multiply times that and times forever. That's what you're going to experience in hell. All of the things, all of the things you have been through that's been the worst thing. But God did not design hell for us. Hell is not designed for a human being. It was designed for Satan and his demons. But if we choose to live a life apart from God, there is only one place that we can go. We can't go in God's house and not be God's children. Because people think that everyone is God's children. No, if you don't have the Spirit of God, we're just a creation of God. In order to be a child of God, you have to have, you have, to have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God adopts you into His Sonship. And why, whereby ye cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy. So you must be born again. The Bible says you must be born again if you want to see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is joy, righteousness, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of God is. Joy, righteousness, and peace in the Holy Ghost. This is the kind of peace that nothing in this world can give you. Not no pill, not no relationship, no woman, no man, not no, no beer, not no liquor, not no... Uh, uh, whatever not no sex this kind of peace and this kind of joy and this kind of righteousness don't come from nothing in this world it comes from the holy ghost and it comes from god it comes from the spirit of god it comes from the lord jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah so that's what this thing is about it's about joy in the holy ghost is about righteousness and peace the peace that the world cannot give you. Beer can give you peace. I tried it. I used to drink every day. Every time I got my check, I'd spend it up in one day on liquor, beer, pills, even methamphetamine. Xanax, low tabs, all that stuff. And it never really truly gave me the peace that I was looking for. It gave me peace for a moment, but it was false peace. The peace that I have now, when I'm going through something, is true peace. And it only can come from the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. And that's how, that's who we need in our lives. Because He is coming back. It doesn't matter what other people say. It's all about what the truth says. And truth says He's coming back quickly. Truth says He's coming back quickly. Will you be found in the faith when he comes back? Will your spirit, will his spirit be in you when he comes back? Because when he comes back, he's looking for those who have his spirit on the inside. And if you don't have his spirit, you don't get to go. That's why I have to keep myself clean every day. I don't want any other spirit in my body. Any other spirit, I don't want nothing that's not of God to live on the inside of me. And so I have to keep my, myself clean by the washing of the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of me. It has nothing to do with me trying to do it. It's what the Holy Spirit is doing. Yes, I pray and yes, I read the Word, but the Holy Ghost has to perform the work in us. We can't do this on our own. We can't do what the Word of God says out of our own flesh. You can't do it. You can't do us right. People can do good. Everyone has that she's a good person or he's a good person, but none of us are really good without Jesus Christ. Us doing good don't make us righteous. Only Christ can make us righteous. It is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For a man who knew no sin, Jesus Christ became sin so that you could become the righteousness of God. You can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but first you have to receive in Jesus. I'm not talking about just walking down the aisle, praying a prayer, going to a building every Sunday, putting your tithes in the offering and pray. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about a relationship, a oneness with God, because that's his desire. God's desire for us is to become one with him in spirit. That's why he sent Jesus, so that Jesus can fulfill all righteousness, God for our sins, 
Wash away our sins, go and live back with the Father, sit on his right hand, and send down the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. You have to have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives you peace. It don't matter what you're going through. And every day, you're changing. And this change doesn't come from an outer thing. It starts on the inside of a man's heart. A, ma a way seems right to a man's heart, but only God's plan will prevail. Mm. A way seems right to a man's heart, but only God's plan. I will read this way in the name of But only God's plan can prevail. It is only God's plan that can prevail. Because we have so many big, grand, great ideas that we think is going to work, that we think is going to do something. But the Bible says only God's plan can prevail. It has nothing to do with your good works. It has nothing to do with what we do on the earth. Because a lot of people get confused. We think that we can just party all the way until we die. We can party on earth, we can do whatever we want. I'm gonna do all that I want to do before I die. That's what he has to did, didn't he? He did everything he wanted to do before he died. But now, he has to, just like all of us, just like I do, has to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And if he did not repent, of what he was doing. If he did not repent on his deathbed, when he stands before God, that's what he's going to see. That's what he's going to be judged by. Whatever he did in the earth is what he's going to be judged by. And he owned a Playboy house or whatever. Whatever we do on this earth in our life is what we're going to be judged by, however we live. Now, like I said again, it's not about our works, but it's about how you live through the Spirit of God, if you have the Spirit of God in you. Now, if you don't have the Spirit of God in you and you leave this earth or something happens, that's not going to be good on Judgment Day. That's why, as a Christian, I myself have to keep myself walking with the Holy Spirit. I have to stay listening. I have to stay yielding to the Holy Ghost. That means I have to submit to Christ. A lot of us don't like that word. We don't like to submit to authority. But the thing is, this kind of authority you're going to want to submit to. Who wouldn't want peace in the midst of their trials and tribulations. Who wouldn't want to experience joy and peace and righteousness in, in the midst of trials, tribulation, and tragedy? Who wouldn't want to experience that? We all, and, and uh, one thing I know about all of us as being uh, just people, just human beings in general, we all want to be loved. That's one thing I know about. We all just want to be loved. And that's who God is. God is love. And if we knew God, we would know love. Because we think that love is in a relationship and you're going together and some people, and it, it, the sad thing is some women think that love is when a man hits you upside the head and we think that love is when you give money all the time or when you buy this and buy that, people think that's love. We really don't know what love is until we know who God is. That's the only way we're going to really know what love is. Because God is love. And then, on top of that, God demonstrated his own love by sending his son to die for us on the cross. He demonstrated the love for us. Who would give up their child for a murderer or a fornicator or an adulterer? Who would give up their child? God did. Someone, a murderer or a a fornicator, someone who, as myself, someone who lived a life of a transgender, a homosexual person, an addicted, addiction, an idolater is what the Bible would call me. Because I looked for my pills and my beer and my liquor and my porn and all of that stuff before I looked to God because I didn't know any better. Some, some of us just don't know any better. But I'm here to tell you, 
better. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you. And he's got a better life for you. For that's what he said in his word. For I know the plans I have for you to curse the Lord. Plans to prosper you. And not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. He has plans that are good for you. His plans are good for you. The plans of the Lord are good. They're not to harm us. He has a hope for you. He has a future for you. Some people are walking around with no hope. Some people are walking around in depression. I struggle with that too. I used to be a depressant, a manic depressant or whatever you call it. Whatever the doctor says, which is not true. Because the Bible says that by, by his stripes we're healed. There is no, no such thing as depression in the word of God. You either got a spirit or, or whatever, it's some kind of emotion. It's called oppression. Sometimes we are spiritually oppressed by the devil. Sometimes we can be spiritually oppressed by the devil, by the enemy. He is our enemy. And he's walking in the earth. He's working in the earth. And you can see the devil's works. You can see the, de the works of the devil. You can see the works of the enemy. All the wars, all the hate, all, all, the, all the, the killing, the death that you see, that don't come from God. Because a lot of people want to blame God. But it does not come from God. Death and destruction does not come from God. Death does not come from God. Only life. God is a God of life. God is a God of light. And God is a God of love. That's who God is. Light, life, and love. God is light, life, and love. Darkness and wickedness come from the enemy, from Satan. Sin, that comes from Satan. But that's why Christ died. He died to forgive us of our sins because what Adam did, which we had nothing to do with, so it's not our fault. It's because of what Adam did. When he ate the, the forbidden fruit, he hearkened unto the voice of his wife, Eve. He listened to that devil. I'm talking about the serpent. And so God had to cast them out of the garden. The ba he basically had to drive them out of the garden. The word drive in the Greek is divorce. He had to divorce us. But Christ is the bride groom. He came to remarry us back unto the Father. He came to re he came to re ooh Lord God Jesus. He came 